Hi, thanks. Um, you got to spare like the conference bingo slide where I like sort of like smugly proclaim I'm a Mac user when I try to like click basic you know things on this page. Um, but we're here. Um, so what was the name of my talk? It was spec writers were just like you, sort of. Um, and I think I'm being a little egregious here when I consider myself a specification writer. But I did, you know that was kind of what I wanted to talk about here today and this impetus to be more egregious. Um, so I was allocated an extra 10 minutes more than I had originally anticipated for this talk, and thus I'm going to descend into this brief narrative history of myself and how I came to be here today. And that sounds egregious, and it in fact will be. Um, so let's begin here. Um, I grew up um, sort of exactly the same as I am now, um, ex exactly the same. Um, and I feel like I've spent a long time sort of returning back to who I was when I was 15. And this is my computer at the time. Um, it belonged to my entire family, but I had clearly commandeered it for my own purposes. There's like lip gloss and like a hair, you know, brush there. Like it's clearly like the, the remnants of a teenage girl all around it. Uh, that also is a VHS player um, on top of that massive modem. Uh, <laughs> it was satellite internet. I don't know if, it, anyway. Um, but I had saved up money to buy a special video card that sort of allowed me to uh, have a video input so I can digitize v VHS, but for no clear reason. There's a VHS tape there. It's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Um, so really, I mean it when I said I haven't changed at all. Um, and this is, this is a very extremely embarrassing glimpse into in exactly what I was when I was 15. This is a, a post I had made on LiveJournal when I was 14, um, 2001. Um, and it reads, Ashley, I, I don't know why I'm speaking in the third person, and in fact, I highlight that in the post. Um, Ashley goes to Walmart and buys Linux Mandrake 8.0, um, which that's right. This was, it was very cheap, but um, it was free software. still had to be purchased from a mega store like Walmart in 2001 because there was just no way to download a file that big, at least not in rural South Carolina in the United States where I'm coming from or was coming from at the time. Um, and so then in, in parentheses, uh, which is like this like proto hashtag, it says user friendly woot. This, woot, it's so embarrassing. Like, I don't know. It's, so, it's, it's just like the core of 2001. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, with O's as well. Um, or with zeros. Um, so there was a couple of really h hilarious follow up entries to this here where I complain about the sound card not working at all um, and just being really frustrated and, and going to bed. So not a lot has changed in my life and not that much has changed like in the world either. I think that people still are, are constantly like, oh, I'm just I'm going to bed because I can't fix the sound card thing. Um, but the point of this is that I was like this regular sort of baby nerd. Um, I spent a lot of time feeling like VLC was just like saving my life. At Matroska too, I felt this way. And that's a gross exaggeration, but uh, like I said, um, egregious, right? And but that's, that's how you feel when you're a teenager. You feel like that, that an open source media player is somehow the most important thing in the world, second to Napster, of course, and the internet and, and a family computer that, you've, that no one else wants to use. Um, so VLC it, like, hit me especially hard because I think as you see in these, these previous blog post entries, um, I was really on this like rage against Windows related things, including an especially Windows media player um, and Windows Millennium Edition, a nightmare that I never want to deal with again. Um, but Windows media player would make you manually download a codec for each video file. There were a lot of codecs floating around. Um, if there was ever a codec war, I'm sure it took place during this time, you know, around me, the internet. Um, and I didn't even like AVI, even though I had no idea that it was a file that was you know, a wrapper created by Microsoft. Um, I, like, I still don't like it. But, uh, I hope this computer keeps, keeps working while I'm dissing on this major corporation. Um, so VLC was this like, sort of introduction to open source software for me. Um, I, yeah, I was like running around trying to install Linux, successfully installing Linux um, in some ways, but operating systems just seemed too big for me to comprehend, and, and VLC was something tangible. You know, this is open source, this is free as in freedom software. Um, that previous slide was what the website looked like in, in 2002, I was coming upon it for roughly the first time. Um, it's free software, it's released under the GNU public license, and which leads to this page here that I'm at now. Um, it links to this definition of free software that I was really into, um, sort of in this abstract way. Um, so, Back to the VLC website, I'm highlighting this part in particular. Um, so I really want to bring up this part, like contribute. Uh, it's very friendly. Um, it, it, like, yeah, great, cool. Um, I wanted to uh, sort of, 
you know, help as much as possible. Like uh, I wanted VLC, I wanted to help it as much as it had helped me, um, which was substantial considering the amount of media that I was like greedily pirating at the time using this weird satellite internet. Um, and also at how much I hated Windows sort of as this metaphor for lack of control over my angsty teenage life. And I was super eager to help out. Um, but it ended up leading me to a bit of a dead end, as friendly as this introduction was, because it just led me to having more and more questions, like lots of questions, like what is C? You know, I'm 15, I can't drive a car, I can't drink, I can't smoke, I can't even vote. And like the operating system, it was just like way too big for me to wrap my head around. What is compiling? Like how do you make, you know, software is so beautiful. It's just like you're making something out of nothing, but you know, you're also making nothing because it's just these ones and zeros, but it's like amazing. But you know, I didn't really have anyone to like guide me through that. Um, YouTube didn't exist, and Wikipedia wasn't like coming up in Google searches quite as readily as it is now. Um, so it was a false start, but I, I went on my way completely. You know, here I am. I studied design, I studied information science, I studied web development, and, and I also bought a Mac, and I quit trying to swap out like PC hardware or whatever, which I think was actually the crux of my issue. It wasn't Windows at all. It was the fact that I had like tried to add in this new weird video digitization hardware for for clearly no reason. Um, but this is like the Dr. Strange love portion of this talk, like how I learned to stop worrying and love Apple. Um, but now I'm here in front of you today. I, you know, I'm much more confident in my ability to understand what C is and how compilers work. I'm not super confident though. Um, I'm not confident to feel like I have a solid grasp on like how you make a file format out of nothing, how this becomes something. Um, so why am I talking about this? Why am I telling you this? Other than I've been giving an extra 10 minutes and why not like totally publicly shame myself while I'm up here. Um, so I want to talk to you about writing standards, um, and I want to talk to you about you writing standards. I want to talk to you about you having the confidence required to write standards. Um, so, you know, I've been super, super fortunate to have spent the past three years on this media conch project. It's, it's been really amazing. It's been such an important component, like an important component of this project is why we're here today and tomorrow talking about Matroska and talking about FFV1 and their standardization efforts. Um, and as part of this project, I've, I've done some work on both of these and, and I want to talk about it in hopes that it'll encourage you to get involved too. Um, I want to explain this process in a way that makes it uh, easier and sort of demystifies this process as we continue through these, these next couple of days. Uh, so when I got started on this project, the media area team had decided that it was best if we convert the standards into Markdown um, and then post them on GitHub, which would make working on the specs collaboratively easier as well as, uh, we hoped, friendlier. Um, so this was a big goal because we wanted as many people, including preservationists, that may not have a technical background to be able to add and contribute as they, as they pleased. Um, so FFE1 of Note was written in Lix, which is based in LaTeX, which... Um, it's not super fun, but I, some people think it's extremely fun, but uh, <laughs> it's also hard to read and share. Like, Lix is really good at math and not really good at sharing. Um, so here's me checking in, like, a whole lot of messy code that other people had to come clean up. Woo! Um, but it was a good start. I, I did a similar dance move with Matroska later. Um, but the good thing about it is that all that work is still ongoing, and you'll hear about that from Steve Lohm when he speaks about an update later. Um, but look at this, though. Bye, Lix. Like, bye. Um, it was great to replace 9,000 lines of code with 900 lines, just like from a developer standpoint. And then it was also great knowing from, I guess, a, a human standpoint that the code is, is now much easier to read and contribute to, at least I hope. So, but the, the messiness that I mentioned before sort of plays an important role in that it allows other people to jump in and, and contribute. And, and once someone contributes once, I hope they'll see it's not so scary and they'll want to contribute again uh, by making more corrections. And every tiny contribution really helps get these standards across the finish line. You know, it's a really long game standardization and you're really looking to finalize every perfect detail of every sentence until it's, it's absolutely ready to uh, be like immortalized forever on the IETF website. Um, so like this tiny typo example, like this matters, you know. Rhoda's always like coming in, <laughs> fixing the typos for me, so I'm so gracious for <laughs> his work all the time. Um, but you know, all of these have to be fixed before the process can be finished. Uh, so something I really appreciate about the Matrosta specification, um, which has been existing, you know, as it has been totally productively for the past 16 years or so, which is like 
wow, the Matrasa spec is old enough to like install fringe Linux distributions by itself. Uh, something I appreciate is the level at which the documentation is friendly. Um, unfortunately, the friendliness sometimes contradicts the tone of a standards body um, that, that a standards body is really striving for. You know, they want like a forceful, precise instead of pleasing and flexible. You know, so I've spent some of my time uh, with the Matroska specification sort of undoing the friendliness, um, which it maybe that suits your personality. You know, that we would love contributors that could help remove some of the friendliness <laughs> from the documentation um, that if it makes it better and more um, precise and concise. Um, so, so far, a lot of this is emphasizing how to contribute um, by making actual changes to the files available on GitHub. Um, and it takes some knowledge of, of how to use a GitHub and, and how GitHub works, which I understand is, is, a, is a pretty large learning curve for everybody, um, even if they've forgotten that that, that is true. Um, so I want to really emphasize that just reviewing the documentation itself for any flaws and emailing somebody about it is, is absolutely a very important and significant way to contribute to these projects. Um, so behind me, this is a GIF of me scrolling through just the table of contents of the last submitted Matroska document. You can see I sort of like get fed up and then the, the page isn't even loading because like that it's so much like to load at some point. This is, I guess this is the actual documentation. But then I'm just like, oh, whatever, start over. Um, uh, that, you know, that was enough. It's huge, it's huge, it's huge. It's, it's gotten a little better lately, but it's, it's still like a massive file. Um, so reading uh, like just a section and looking for typos or looking um, sort of at the larger specification holistically and seeing where things need to be structured better or more cohesively, that's all very important work and that needs to be done and we need people to, to volunteer to do it. Um, this is when I sort of bring it all together, of which I was like, I'll write this later. <laughs> um, you know, I, I had a perfect way to bring it together last night, but then I just immediately fell asleep. Um, but I guess uh, what I wanted to say is sort of that uh, we, we've strived in the standard work to put together a, a social infrastructure to make it a welcoming space um, and welcome in new people. But I understand that friendliness is not enough. You know, uh, sometimes you really need this additional push to really have the confidence to do this work. And, and I want to be that person for you. Uh, Dave Rice has certainly been that person for me, although I think sometimes he, he regrets the level of confidence he's instilled in me. <laughs> but um, I think the problem isn't in a desire to do this work. It's not the knowledge that people have in their brains. Um, it's sort of the confidence factor. And, and I don't want to use this words, uh, the words um, imposter syndrome because I feel that shifts the burden on the individual instead of the social infrastructure around an individual at any given time. But I do see that as sort of like the crux of the issue here. Um, so yeah, I contribute, contribute. Um, let me help out you, and you can help out. You know, and, and thank you so much. So to all of the open software developers and contributors out here in the audience today and in the world, um, you've had such a massive impact on people all over the world, whether you know it or not. You know, like angry fourteen-year-olds in the middle of nowhere, United States. So it's it's much appreciated. So thank you. I think we have time for one question. Preferably someone close. A comment, yeah. Or preferably a question. Anybody? I'd also like it maybe you could say this personally rather than like in the whole audience right now, but I, I would really like to hear about ways in which uh, we could improve this and make this better. There's a problem I like, I like to think about is sort of um, what are we doing wrong or like what, what scares you about something? But you don't have to shout it out. Peter. Hello. I've been speaking. Hi, I'm, I'm Peter Pubestinger. Um, I've talked to people like, hey, if they want to do something, contribute and, and join us and so on. Yeah. And a lot of them are actually afraid because they say like, but if I make a mistake, then people would see this. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, so that's I don't true. do anything so people don't see anything. Yeah, um, I really hope people can be en encouraged to sort of email people directly, like me or anybody, um, and then it's, it's still like a private, yeah. It's like the beauty of open source is that it's open and out for everybody to see, or working in the open is, is such a wonderful like way to work, but I understand that, yeah, that, you know, you make a mistake. I was just like, you know, I'm just like, I'll make as many mistakes as I want constantly, but, uh, you know. You do have to get comfortable with that, <laughs> especially if you're not a developer and that's not your natural inclination. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashley. Um, 
Now I'd like to introduce... Oh, hi. Oh, sure. It says, Julian A. Remy, not a question, but Ashley, you are an inspiration to us. 